working closely with SMA Europe and the Alliance partners over the past 10 months or so to bring you this white paper. As it is important to us to support this patient-led initiative, we have also provided in-kind support to make this happen. The white paper summarizes the major reasoning for introducing SMA newborn screening in all European countries now. It is intended to inform a systematic dialogue in the healthcare systems across Europe to help foster the introduction of uh, SMA newborn screening for all children in Europe. Before we are talking about the white paper, let me start by sincerely thanking the Alliance partners, the European Reference Network for Neuromuscular Diseases, the European Organization for Rare Diseases, Eurodis, the European Alliance of Neuromuscular Disorder Associations, EAMDA, the TREAT NMD Network, the University of Groningen, Health ECOR, and our funding partners, Biogen, Lacar, Novartis Gene Therapies, Perkin Elmer, and Roche. Without all these partners, this white paper would not have been possible. And once again, thank you very much for your commitment. You show by this commitment that the fate of babies born with SMA is important to you. Also, the Alliance Steering Committee members uh, deserve recognition for their tireless efforts and multiple meetings to reach consensus on the white paper. Special thanks to Gulsin Rumus of Eurodis, Dr. Natalie Gomans uh, from the University of Leuven and Treat NMD, Kasper Ruczynski of SMA Europe, and two members who will also join us as panelists today. That's Jana Popova from Yanda and the European Patient Forum, and Dr. Eduardo Tizzano from Valdebron University Hospital in Spain. But speaking first today to us will be Marie Christine Uyard, chair of the uh, Alliance Steering, uh, Steering Committee, board member of SMA Europe, and a volunteer with the EFM Teleton in France for over 20 years. Marie Christine is really spearheading this strong call to action for newborn screening in SMA, and she was absolutely instrumental to making this white paper possible. She has spent hundreds of hours to make this possible. And Marie-Christine, I'm very, very happy that you uh, will open this launch event now by uh, sharing with us your uh, view, view, view views on uh, this white paper and this initiative. Your presentation, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you show my slide? Okay, so my name is Marie Christine Uyad. Um, I am the mother of a young lady uh, with SMA uh, and advocating in SMA for organization for more than 20 years now. Uh, I have the honor to be the president of SMA Europe a few years ago uh, when the first efficient treatment was approved by EMA. And now uh, the chair of the steering committee of the SMA Newborn Screening Alliance created by SMA Europe. SMA Europe is an umbrella organization uh, with 21 patient organizations uh, all over uh, Europe. Uh, its aim was to support first research in SMA and now more to disseminate and information and best practice and support national organization in implementation of this best, if, of this best practice. Um, next. Why um, we decide to go to uh, create this alliance? Um, first, um, among the different um, action SMA Europe organized, uh, there is the scientific congresses. The last one was in every last year and very successful. And one of the conclusion, one of the main conclusion was testing for SMA at birth safe lives. You know that SMA in, is, in most of the case, a severe and devastating disease that in the past led to death many babies. Today, despite the new treatments, most of them have severe disability 
and many families and organizations are requesting newborn screening to prevent the most severe disability. As a mother of a lady with SMA, I can attest how difficult it is to manage in a family with an SMA patient. First, the mother or the parent understood that this baby is different. He has a motor difficulty, problems for swallowing, and then the family tried to find a doctor. And most of the time at the beginning, they say, he's lazy, uh, you are too stressed, wait and see. And one day, a doctor identified the disease. And then you think that you should have gone to this doctor very earlier and you have lost time. Maybe you have let severe disability begin because you wasn't able to provide the best care to your baby. You blame yourself even more nowadays with a new treatment who stop the disease but do not establish any uh, function. And for SMA Europe, accelerating access to newborn screening became obvious. And then we discover how complex it is to apply for a new disease in a national newborn screening program. Each country asks more or less for the same question in a different way. Sometimes you have to go region by region in a single country. Each country wanted to, uh, the, or to, to start their own pilot program. And of course, they find the same evidence. So in February 2020, SMI Europe has decided to create the alliance to support national stakeholders to apply for newborn screening for SMA. Next, please. Despite the pandemic, uh, we performed to create and launch the Alliance in August 2020 with some communication tools, a flyer, a poster in English, but also available in of a few other different languages. We have the amazing chance to organize a steering committee with different stakeholders as patient organization, genetician, pediatrician, health economic expert, and of course, mainly due to the active support of Admedicom as a secretariat. The steering committee proposed to gather in a unique document all the evidence to apply for newborn screening. We identify a few gaps, the most important one was about whom to treat and when to treat, as SMA is a single genetic deletion, but can present a large variety of severity. We organized a workshop with a pilot leads SMA Europe propose an answer regarding the current knowledge. And at the end, more or less one year after SMA Europe decides uh, take the decision to create this alliance, we can present the first version of a large paper and start to disseminate it. Of course, it will be updated regularly regarding the additional knowledge we can have on this disease. Next. Where are we uh, with uh, newborn screening in Europe? Uh, we are currently um, in the way of implementation. But no country at this time has already implemented in its whole population, but hopefully things are changing slowly, but changing. Germany has approved the implementation and do it region by region, and all the German baby will have a free access to test end of summer 2021. The Belgium has already implemented it in a part of the, area of the country, in Wallonia and Brussels area, and we hope it will come soon uh, in the Flemish part. As you can see on the map, a few countries have pilots ongoing, have um, requests ongoing, decision to be taken by a government, but no implementation, so it's very, very various status, but there is still a lot to do. If you can imagine in 2020, around 200,000 babies in Europe were tested to compare to 5 million babies born in Europe in the European Union. 
in the balance, we can see in the US in 2021, they will test 70% of newborn. We still have a lot of work, but our objective is to have all baby tested in Europe by 2025. Next. And what will happen? The white paper is just one step ahead. Uh, for accelerating the implementation, uh, we will of course disseminate it, translate it in different language, and hope that you all can support us in this action. But also now, we will go country by country to identify why there is so many delay and try to answer, maybe via small workshop, to regulators' questions. What seems to be very important for us is to have a look beyond, not only focusing on SMA, but trying to find a way to avoid to over disease years of delay in the implementation in newborn screening in Europe. And for that, we will work very closely uh, to, with all of this and all of the network. As very every week new information, we will of course prepare new version of the white paper as often as needed. But meanwhile, we will put all the information on our website. Next, please. You can see uh, here the address of our website. Um, you will find all sorts of information very useful to apply for newborn screening. Um, of course, there's a chapter called Tools, where you will find poster, do different document, but also the map of Europe that will be updated very regularly, and many other information as recent publication on uh, the topic. So I hope that we will be able to update it very quickly and to have all your information you need it. And I will thank you for listening to me and I think we have very important speaker now that can continue the talk and join you on the right very soon. Thank you very much, Marie-Christine, for introducing the white paper and for making clear that uh, this is the start uh, of a, a marathon that hopefully will be finished latest 25 so that every child in uh, Europe has the option to have access to newborn screening right at birth. I, I'm uh, happy now to and I'm honored uh, that we are joined by two members of the European Parliament and I'd like to, sta uh, to start with uh, the member of the European Parliament, Mr. Cyrus Angra from the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats uh, from Malta. Uh, and uh, he is an active member of the Public Health Committee, uh, among many other responsibilities. Mr. Angra, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And we'd like to invite you to share your views on the uh, access to newborn screening all over Europe. Thank you, Andreas, and uh, I would like to start by thanking SMA Europe for inviting me to this event. By way of introduction, well, as Andreas already mentioned, I am Cyrus Anger, a member of the European Parliament from Malta, and I am a member of the Public Health Committee and the Special Committee on Beating Cancer. Pushing forward the agenda for more progress in the area of rare diseases is one of my priorities when it comes to public health. And I am therefore very happy to be present for the launch of this white paper concerning the need for newborn screening for spinal muscular atrophy, SMA. And I would like to thank SMA Europe and the SMA NBS Alliance for the excellent work that they have done on this issue. It is imperative that we support this quest to include SMA in national newborn screening panels. NBS allows infants to be screened shortly after birth for a list of disorders that are treatable, but difficult or impossible to detect clinically. It therefore allows for the identification of patients before the first symptoms even emerge and maximizes treatment outcomes. However, Many infants affected by SMA in Europe are waiting for far too long for a diagnosis, and this can lead to serious 
and irreversible damage to their health and their development. Without newborn screening, it generally takes three to five months for infants with the most severe of SMA to be diagnosed and treated, during which time muscular atrophy may already have occurred and become unfortunately irreversible. All in all, newborn screening gives infants with SMA the best chance of a normal life. In fact, together we should work towards the goal of having newborn screening programs in all European countries, including a test for SMA by at least 2025. And the hope is that this white paper will be the driver of change in this regard. I also want to mention the role of the European reference networks, the ERNs in NBS. These should bring together the best expertise we have in Europe around specific disease areas. And the goal to improve treatment and the diagnosis of rare diseases in Europe is already part of their mandate. So they should be in a very good position to provide uniform recommendations across Europe on the diseases to include in NBS panels. However, ensuring that they have the necessary mandate and the necessary funding to work with this is crucial. As a member of the ENVI committee within the European Parliament, I want to assure you that I understand that we clearly have a role to play too in NBS. This is an area which clearly fall, calls for EU action to reduce inequalities in access to care across the European Union and which links well with other areas where the European Commission is fostering cooperation between European Union member states. There are substantial discrepancies in the number of conditions screened for at birth in the European Union, ranging, for instance, from two diseases screened for in Romania to 48 diseases in some regions of Italy. The problem is that whilst there are internationally recognized criteria to be used to assess the inclusion of a new disease in the NBS panels, each country assesses this individually and makes different types of considerations, including economic ones. The 2008 Commission's communication on rare diseases and related council recommendations in 2009 had suggested that cooperation in screening practices could generate evidence on which member states could base their decisions. In 2013, the Commission had commissioned a study on NBS practices in Europe and created the conditions for specific initiatives in this area. However, we haven't seen much follow-up action after that, so we need to work hard in Parliament to refocus the attention of the Commission on this area. The hope is that this would lead to the exchange of best practices between Member States and eventually to a common framework, including a list of diseases recommended for screening. Following the launch of this white paper, Today, we need to identify the actions to be supported and those which make the most sense to start working on immediately. We need to find a way to put pressure on the European Commission on this topic, and we can think about including an article on this within the report on the current discussions on the EU pharmaceutical strategy, but also explore the possibility for the Parliament to work on a report on early diagnosis for rare diseases including genetic testing and newborn screening. Another concrete call which should be pushed for is for the Public Health Advisory Committee of the European Commission to include NBS as a priority and as a best practice. This would allow funding from both the future EU4 Health programme as well as from the Horizon Europe to be dedicated to NBS specifically. I want to conclude by saying that this is a topic which is very close to my heart, and that in my work as a member of this European Parliament in this mandate, I will seek to push forward the mentioned targets to the best of my abilities. Please feel free to reach out to me on this topic. Pushing forward together will be essential to bring about the changes needed. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cyrus Enrev, for this very strong statement. You made clear that there is a role for Europe to play and there is certainly a role for the European Parliament to make sure that the European Commission follows up on those actions that have already been started and is, is supporting 
all member states in Europe in the uh, of the European Union uh, to help them implementing uh, newborn screening for SMA. Uh, we are happy to have another uh, MEP, uh, Mrs. Claudia Gammon uh, from Renew uh, Europe uh, from Austria, uh, supporting the launch of this white paper. She cannot join us today in person, but she sent us a video that we will be watching now. Hello. Thank you very much for giving me the chance today to speak to you via video statement. Unfortunately, I can't be with you in the meeting, um, but I hope that I can summarize my thoughts on the white paper in this statement just as well. My name is Claudia Gamon. I'm an MEP for Renew Europe uh, from Austria, and I serve on the ITRE committee as well as the ENVI committee. And um, research, um, especially on topics such as this, is very, very close um, to my heart because I'm also a founding member of the European Alliance for Transformative Therapies, and I will get um, into that a little bit more later. Um, the reason why this white paper is very necessary is unfortunately a very bleak one because there are still too many children in Europe who are not tested for SMA after birth. Um, as is mentioned in the white paper, the number of diseases covered in newborn screenings in the uh, European Union vary widely, ranging from 2 to 48 diseases depending on the member state. And that is um, really a tragic number for the children living in areas where the options are so limited. Every person, every newborn child that suffers from SMA has a right to get good medical treatment. Um, but for the best medical treatment, the first thing that is necessary is to get a medical exam. And the focus needs to be on early diagnosis because pre-symptomatic treatment improves not only life expectancy, but also the quality of life of patients. And early detection is crucial also to get the most effective drugs because while well, um, screening is cheap, uh, drugs are not. And in Austria, for example, it's almost impossible to get health insurance coverage for SMA drugs if the patient is not a, a baby or an infant anymore. That means that in some cases, early diagnosis can actually be decisive for whether or not a child or a person can actually uh, get the medication that they need and get funding for the medication that they need. I think that that's an, actually an, an unfair and in human treatment, especially for the standards that the European Union claims to have in this regard. And my party has advocated for the extension of coverage for innovative medicines such as those uh, for SMA in Austria. It's really strange, really unfortunate, and in the end sad that um, we would have this resource, actually, the knowledge and data from a health market as big as um, the one of the European Union and uh, such a topic uh, as rare diseases where relief is highly dependent on the on the availability of data also for research, yet we cannot properly coordinate. Um, the most effective way to improve the, the national situation also from Brussels perspective is of course to raise awareness, to increase the pressure on national governments to change their policies. Um, but we can also further improve the coordination um, and sharing of data and expertise, for e example, by expanding the existing ERN and networks and investing in research and innovation. Especially investments in basic research are so important to help people suffering from rare diseases. We can, of course, work on recommendations, but they aren't binding to member states. So political pressure is a really, really important point. And talking about research and innovation, this brings me to the uh, European Alliance for Transformative Therapies, of which I am a founding member. And we aim uh, to raise awareness about the potential brought on by transformative therapies. And the Alliance is an informal interest group that connects um, members of the European Parliament with patient groups, with researchers, with medical experts, with associations. Um, healthcare and non-healthcare specialists to re really get a good look at all the different aspects of the topic. Um, it's one that I'm, I'm very, very committed to because I believe uh, in the transformative nature of, of innovation in this regard, especially when it comes to cell and gene therapies, for the great opportunities that they could provide 
in treating diseases and in, in increasing the quality of life of patients and their families. These treatment options need to be made uh, accessible to patients all over the European Union. And we have adopted a, a consensus statement uh, that addresses these key issues for transformative therapies and it maps legislative frameworks that provide potential to enable better access to these therapies, such as clinical trials, cross-border healthcare um, or healthcare technology um, assessments. So to conclude, I would like to thank each and every one of you who works on, on this topic, uh, who fights for more equality in healthcare access. Um, I admire the dedication that you have to devote yourself to this topic, to help other people. It's really important that we uh, all work together to increase the awareness about these topics um, in Brussels on the European level and get this into the member states. I hope that we can work together and that we will have as soon as possible uh, screenings for SMA um, all over Europe and that this will be the norm, a, a standard uh, measure of care um, for newborn babies. Um, in the meantime, I will continue to talk about this topic everywhere that I get a chance to. And uh, with that being said, I hope that you have a successful, informative and interesting event and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much at this point and uh, from this place to Claudia Ramon for uh, for joining this initiative. And she obviously uh, put the whole uh, effort in a broader perspective, making sure that we don't forget uh, to uh, uh, to advance our uh, efforts in researching for better treatments for all patients with rare diseases, including SMA. Now it is my particular pleasure to introduce a key person in the European Parliament, a key member of the European Parliament uh, to this effort. I'm speaking about Dr. Stelios Kumopoulos from uh, the European People's Party from Greece. Uh, Dr. Kumopoulos is uh, trained as a psychiatrist uh, and he's living with SMA. Uh, Dr. Kimpopoulos, please share with us why are you supporting newborn screening for SMA in Europe? Thank you very much, uh, Andreas. Uh, I, I couldn't do I couldn't do something uh, something different from supporting uh, MBS, and uh, I'm very really glad uh, to say that uh, very. Uh, Last uh, last yesterday, I uh, announced uh, to me that I will be also a member of Envy, so it will be easier to for, to my work for my work to do more on the issue of uh, NBS. Um, and um, I'm very deeply honored uh, to be a SMA Alliance ambassador. I think that my high interest on NBS. Uh, for rare diseases is well known. Most of my actions, even the ones before involving in politics, uh, were oriented towards the well-being and the rights of the disabled persons. It is unreasonable not to take advantage of the science when it can improve and lengthen one's life. It is proven that the NBS, uh, as uh, means, uh, uh, Ms. Maria earlier said, uh, for SMA and other diseases, in addition to impressive innovative treatments, can do that. This crime, it's a real crime, but this opportunity to life is not available to every, every time, especially in the EU, where the funds and all the supportive mechanisms are available and they are just not used by each member state. Of course, I'm highly aware that all these babies will still will still remain disabled even when they are treated right after their birth. And that their main problems will be deriving not by the impairment, but, but by the obstacles of the societies they will live in and the violation of their human rights. 
That is why I support MBS, but I highlight the importance of it being supplemented with a frame of services in the community that each state should provide. I'm glad that the white paper is last. I hope that it will contribute to a common and European policy on BS. And uh, uh, I want to have uh, more time for, uh, for a conversation. Uh, I'll stop here. I, I would like to have a very short uh, intervention. Uh, thank you all. And uh, I wish you we uh, do enjoy this important uh, event. Andreas, thanks once again for this uh, uh, exchange of yours. And, we, and uh, to, I'm very glad to be part of this alliance and uh, to, to do my best for raising awareness toward the idea of NBH. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stelius, for this uh, for the, this statement, for your support. And I have to say, we take uh, pride in having you at your at our side, uh, fighting together for uh, NBS and SMA. And you stated that yes, access to innovative treatments is part of this promise, but also access to social services that help families to cope with the with the impact the disease has on social life. And uh, I think by, by combining both, this is a holistic, uh, holistic there, approach. And there are uh, some last words. It's a human right to, 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 to be treated with the best treatment, but also it's a human right to live in an environment that is accessible for everyone. So the fight for for babies, for for human beings with SMLs is multi-level, and uh, we might we we have to 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 face it, to face them all together, uh, with uh, uh, all together for for them, for us to live the same life as anyone else. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's a human right. And that, that's something that we also stress in the white paper. I think we, we can't, we really can't stress it more. And um, actually this is a, it's, 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 a, it's almost a perfect uh, uh, handover to, um, to the medical aspect of it. And I'm honored to be joined uh, now by um, an eminent specialist, pediatrician and geneticist in SMA, Dr. Eduardo Tizano, who was also, or is also a member of the steering committee of the Alliance. Uh, Eduardo, you're coming from Valdepon Research Institute in Spain and uh, the floor is yours. So hello, thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of this Alliance. I've been involved in, during the last uh, 40 years, just, uh, seeing patients and involved with families in SMA. And this is a great moment uh, for all the different stakeholders and different uh, health systems, patients, families, physicians. Everybody is uh, witnessing these changes in, in spinal muscular atrophy. And I'm very glad to be part of this uh, evolution and all the changes. We are starting from thinking about early detection of the disease uh, several decades ago when we were thinking about what we could do for the patients just to avoid as much as possible, you know, the evolution of the disease. And we were already just thinking about taking uh, um, uh, an approach that can be diagnosed in these patients when, when the gene was discovered. So after that, we were just collaborating in different uh, way with different scientists and participating together into this uh, route to the treatment of SMA. And now that the treatment is a reality and we have these transformative therapies in the disease, so we are now facing a really challenge that how we should change from the uh, tertiary prevention that is treat all the patients that manifest the disease to the secondary prevention that is treat all these patients in the presymptomatic way of the disease. And the best way is just with the newborn screening that detect 
at least 95% of these cases at birth. And we are really uh, glad to, to help into the decision of these patients. Because uh, in most of these countries, in, in European countries, they have access to the transformative therapies as a tertiary prevention. So even though with a difference of months, of weeks, it makes a really important difference into the evolution of the patients. And at the, at the end, these patients will be treated when they manifest the disease. So if we really uh, uh, prevent the, the manifestation of the disease and we prevent uh, early when the diagnosis is already uh, very difficult to perform, but if we have the newborn screen, we can really uh, include that into a different dimension of the disease. And if we change that dimension of the disease, we can really make an important difference of the burden for the patient, for the family, for the society, and for the health system. So this is my main uh, thought about that. You know, after being uh, witnessing different uh, families and patients with SMA during the last 40 years, as I mentioned before, and I'm really glad that this is an extremely important opportunity just to change the evolution of the disease. And I hope that we will have a near future in which all these uh, babies that are born with SMA, they are early detected, early uh, communicating to the families, good decisions, and they can have the opportunity of the chance to uh, receive a treatment and to change the, all the burden at the end for the family and for the patient. So this is my, my main uh, thought about that. I don't want just uh, to, to take time from all the other participants, but I'm very glad just this is moment is here and be really part of this moment. So my congratulations to all the people that have been working together and all the people that during all these years has been supporting SMA in different ways. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eduardo Tiziano, for that uh, statement and for your participation in this and for your contribution. Um, it's not a participation, it's a true contribution. And it's actually also uh, as a symbol for how strongly aligned patient organizations and the academic uh, communities and the learned societies are here in this case to fight jointly for the right of patients and families to have a newborn screening and to have appropriate treatment. Uh, let me thank you again and please also um, uh, re uh, transfer that thank to, to all your colleagues who are contributing to this uh, uh, day by day. I now want to ask another member of our uh, steering committee, Jana Popova from the European Alliance of Neuromuscular Disorder Association, Yanda, uh, talking to us. Uh, Yanda is particularly uh, taking care of, uh, of uh, patient associations and, and muscular, dystrophy, uh, muscular disorder dissociations in Eastern Europe, where we see a lot of challenges. Yana, please. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much uh, for the invitation. It is a great honor to be here today uh, together with uh, all other amazing uh, key speakers. Uh, it is true that uh, newborn screening is extremely important in the work of the European Alliance of uh, Neuromuscular Disorders Associations. Uh, for me, newborn screening can provide many advantages in the medicine and also many benefits for the early detection of the SMA. I'm very glad and very happy that in the last few months I have been part of the Alliance for Newborn Screening and uh, I'm very glad that uh, today we established this white paper which I hope uh, is going to uh, do amazing work uh, in different European countries and the newborn screening is going to be better implemented. Uh, it is true that uh, when we talk about uh, European countries and especially uh, different European countries, unfortunately we still can observe uh, uh, inequalities in the implementation of uh, newborn screening. In uh, Eastern Europe uh, we have faced different challenges uh, in uh, 
implementation of this program. And I think that uh, this white paper is a very good starting point uh, to um, uh, talk with the decision makers, to present the needs of uh, the community of uh, SMA uh, people, and uh, to convince uh, politicians and decision makers of the benefits for newborn screening programs. Because uh, the truth is that uh, in the last few years in Eastern European countries, there is a will and there is uh, improvement in the implementation of medical therapies for people with SMA. And we should convince um, decision makers that uh, uh, this medical treatment uh, could be very much connected with the newborn screening programs because we can't, you can't have treatment and uh, without having a good early diagnosis. So, uh, I think this is a very good starting point and uh, I would like to congratulate uh, everyone in the Alliance and uh, everyone who is here today for this amazing work. And uh, I'm sure that, uh, and I hope that by 2025, which is the main aim of the white paper, we're going to have uh, better implementation of newborn screening programs in Europe and we are going to overcome these inequalities, which we still observe today. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jana. And talking about inequalities and differences also in, in Eastern Europe between access to newborn screening, I'm very glad to be joined now by Kasper Ruczynski. Kasper was absolutely instrumental to uh, writing this paper and was a uh, East member of the steering committee. Um, but uh, he's from Poland and he has firsthand experience as a patient advocate how to lobby successfully for newborn screening uh, for SMA uh, in his country and Kasper, we would be grateful if you could share a little bit of your experiences, how you started, what kind of challenges you had to overcome and what you have accomplished at the end of the day. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for for the floor, for the opportunity to speak, to say a few words. Uh, uh, that's true. We've been uh, successful in uh, Poland uh, to get newborn screening introduced. Uh, the first children will be screened, uh, I believe, next week. Uh, and the, all the children in Poland will be screened for SMA by October 2022, or starting from October 2022. Uh, uh, so, uh, about advocating, I will say, uh, uh, I will speak at length in a moment. But for now, I'd like to refer also to the words uh, of uh, Dr. Uh, Kampuropoulos. Uh, about treatment and uh, medical intervention being human rights. Uh, if we could look up on the map of Europe once again, but now with slightly different colors. Um, uh, may I have the slide up on the screen? Uh, may I ask for it? That's Europe as regards newborn screening for SMA. So we see there are some areas where children are or will soon be screened for SMA, a disease that kills, the disease that leaves a person uh, to live their whole life with a disability, with a severe disability. So some children will be screened for, others the majority will not. So we are seeing this huge inequality, a huge uh, problem that doctors will have to tell mothers, will tell parents, we are sorry your child was born on the wrong side of the border. If if she was born 10 kilometers further away, she would be screened at birth. But now she's born here, she will be she will have to live a life with in a life of disability. So that's supposedly in a Europe without borders, where we are seeing that all, there are no borders in Europe. I think now in 2021, in 2021, we are seeing that there are challenges, health challenges that cross the borders, that are, they are like common to the block. And we are seeing that the entire block of the European Union and beyond is, has a capacity to react jointly, to address these problems, like uh, just speaking with one voice and distribute health resources equally to all member states and also including the neighboring countries. So we see there such a potential is there, but how to make, how to realize it, how to make it happen? That's a big question for all of us. And I'm very grateful that here the member of European members of European Parliament are present among us, because on the country level we see patient organizations advocating for for screening. We have been successful in Poland. 
it was uh, perhaps uh, but we started like two year over two years ago the first discussions we had about newborn screening were in 2017 it's in 19 uh, in 2017 so um, almost four years ago and from that time on we made this narrative presence at every press conference at every public discussion public debate about sma we always made sure that newborn screening was mentioned as a natural consequence of treating because that's what treating you need to treat early and then it has to be done ideally at birth so we are fortunate and children in poland are fortunate but they are also children in germany and belgium and the netherlands are fortunate and i'm seeing on more countries serbia which is poor children are also fortunate and they will be screened for this killer disease what about other children what's the role here of the european parliament i'd like i'd love to uh, i'd love to I'd be looking for an answer. I'd love if someone could answer this question or point in the right direction. Steer us, help us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kasper, for sharing your experience in Poland and making, again, a very strong statement that uh, there is a lot of inequality of access uh, in Europe. And uh, may I come at this point back to um, Cyrus Andrew? Uh, this inequality of access. Uh, how? What can? What can the European Parliament do about it? I mean, you can say this is member state responsibility, and of course, we shouldn't forget about those countries who are not member of the European Union. Uh, what is? What is the role of the European Parliament at this point? Thank you, uh, Andrea. First of all, I'm very happy to hear that Celius will be also joining the NV committee, which also takes care of public health, because it is always good to have more allies in, in this um, committee and uh, coming from different political groups and working together will be the best way forward in order to um, uh, have the most impact in, in our lobbying, let's say, for uh, this amongst others. Um, I believe that the European Parliament can do quite a lot, especially today with the fact that um, with COVID-19, the European Commission seems to be pushing towards a European health union. And in that sense, uh, I believe that various aspects of the European health union will start being discussed in the coming months and years. And this is where I see that we can work in order to um, reduce the inequalities, so to say, between the different member states when it comes to uh, such issues. This is not the only case. There are a number of other uh, cases when it comes to health um, measures that are so different between uh, member states. And I believe that the proposals for a European Health Union and for the EU for Health um, proposals as well can lead to a better um, way in which different member states unite together and reduce the inequalities between them and work in a similar way, even by learning from each other what um, the best practices in various member states are. In fact, uh, we are doing this in the Beating Cancer Committee, for instance, and this kind of example could be um, spilled over onto other areas that um, I believe are as important to discuss within the health context. Thank you, uh, Stelius. Uh, I know that uh, it is important for you to stress that SMA is one of a couple of many rare diseases. And uh, what do you, what's your opinion and what's your view on this? Uh, yes, my, my perspective in there on every topic is to try to find allies because as much as we are as many as we are we are stronger to find to to to, to erase the, the 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 way of thinking that uh casper referred, referred, uh, referred before we cannot have from 21st and uh, 2021st to have member steps with different uh acceptance 
of inner scaling. It's unacceptable from my point of view. So uh, we have, SMA is one of the rare diseases. So we need to say, to find another rare diseases in a common uh, direction. And, there, and uh, to say in a, in a European level, that yes, this is a rare disease, but for my life, it's my life. And I need to, to live in a perfect level. Therefore, I, I'm a very, I, 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 I'm a great supporter of finding other rare diseases present to fight for the same, uh, for the same end. So I was I'm muted uh, automatically and unintentionally. Uh, Stelius, thank you very much. And uh, I think there is you you are asking and you're calling uh, to join forces with allies. And um, certainly there is no better organization to uh, to help join forces when it comes to rare disease patients across Europe than Eurodis, the European Organization for Rare Diseases. And I'm uh, pleased that Gulzin Gulmus is uh, also with us. And Gulzin, uh, if you um, uh, if you could share with you, uh, with us uh, your audience's view uh, on this effort. Yeah, can you hear me well? We can. I can. We can hear you. And please uh, uh, switch on your camera if possible. As um, well. Yeah, let me try because I'm using two screens. Well, um, if it's if it's not working, it's not a big deal, of course. But okay. Um, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for giving me yeah, the go. chance to speak. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. now it works. Okay, so it, I just want to say that, yeah, a lot of important things were said already, and I just want to highlight the important point from the rare disease family's perspective. So about the differences in screening practices in newborns in Europe, as you already we wanted to take action to advocate for harmonized approaches to newborn screening in European countries. And we recently published these 11 key principles for newborn screening. And this was developed with a group of professionals, experts, and of course, patient advocates in newborn screening. We also had runs of consultations with the European Federation, national rare disease patient organizations. And what I want to say is that all these work showed us that newborn screening improves lives of newborns and their families by putting the newborn in the center and also reducing the burden of the family, as Mary Christine said, and also reducing the diagnostic odyssey. And if it exists, it gives access to treatment as soon as possible and help families give informed decisions. And it makes sure that the babies don't have fewer chances of being diagnosed depending on when they're where which country they're born. So as you are, we're really happy to be part of the SMA European Alliance for Newborn Screening. We've tried to highlight these points in the principles document uh, and try to bring the rare disease families and patients perspective into the white, white paper. And just want to say that we definitely support the objective of putting newborn screening for SMA in every European country until 2025. And we also hope that this approach of SMA uh, European Newborn Screening Alliance could be used as a model to implement the newborn screening in other rare diseases as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Goldton, and uh, thanks again to Eurodis for for supporting us here. I mean, Eurodis is, uh, I had to, uh, many years ago the privilege to be a member of the board of Eurodis for a couple of years, and Eurodis is certainly uh, the benchmark for, uh, for uh, fighting for the rights for the rare diseases, for people living with rare diseases all over the world, and uh, we are very proud that you, we have you as an ally and uh, Gulson with you in person, also a very active member of our steering committee. Um, before I hand over to Marie Christine for some concluding words, let me uh, raise a question that was, um, or uh, come up with a question that was raised by Andrea Corazza, um, uh, who is uh, representing Biogen. And uh, Andrea made a very important uh, comment in the chat. Uh, so uh, he warned us what role the European reference networks could play uh, in the uh, in in supporting um, implementing uh, uh, SMA a uh, newborn screen for SMA all over Europe, uh, and probably Eduardo, if you could um, uh, address uh, if you could address that question, and uh, then of course Marie Christine later on. 
Uh, so thank you, thank you, Andrea, for coming with this. Uh, so I think that this is a, a a really important issue. So how we can really have, in terms of equity, just uh, the way in which we can really harmonize all the practice of newborn screening, because uh, you know the, the the detection is one thing, but the second thing is okay. How we communicate, third, how we really uh, share the uh, decisions of treatments and the fourth thing is how these treatments are available country by country and what how is the access of the treatment or uh, in all these countries because this is also so far some inequity in this way so we have to deal with the several chain challenges that we have to include so my 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 worry is that you know with the ERN. Uh, so I, I think Alessandra Ferlini is here in the, in the line, and I think is uh, she's, a, she's one of the coordinators of uh, of the uh, genetic studies on this. And I don't know if she wants just to make a specific comment. But for my side, I think that the role of uh, European reference network could be really very important in order to harmonize as much as possible all these alternatives that are totally challenged because we now are facing regional programs in most of these countries. So hopefully Poland will be the first one that will be in, in, in one year they will have all the population just of babies just screened. So I think that we have to take this example and after that we'll see what, what will be the best way to harmonize. But I think it's, a, it's, it's an important challenge, but the European reference network could really be uh, an important tool of uh, network to harmonize and to work together. Yeah, thank you. Alessandra is indeed with me. Andrea, can I add up something? Sure, Stelios, please. Uh, I, I, I'm, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Diano uh, with his quotes. We need to find any channel for uh, so for the, for supporting this harmonization. One thing is we need to do 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 to to, uh, to find as many as much as possible uh, pilot studies and the trials. And this is, I think, the the one part. But uh, the other thing and most important is to have the civil society with us, to to have patients, advocates, and advocates to support uh, in member states that they need, we need NBS to be harmonized on an EU level. So uh, we need to find also these channels and uh, talk about the idea of uh, harmonization. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the pilot, many pilot studies that are being un uh, undertaken in Europe, they probably also need the kind of meta analysis and in the call and, uh, of action, we ask the European Union to help uh, 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 making this meta analysis possible. There is Alexander Fern Alessandra Fellini actually with us, and Alessandra, I want uh, I wonder if you want to uh, share with us uh, some views on how uh, uh, the uh, European reference networks, and especially Euro NMD, could uh, could play a role. Yeah, hello, yeah. everybody. It's a pleasure to you know to stay with you and uh, you know, following this this uh, you know important day. I just echoing what Eduardo said uh, about the importance of uh, newborn screening and the link with the European reference networks, of course, because these are the sites where, uh, you know, all ray diseases uh, find that their care and, uh, you know, the, the managing uh, aspects uh, met. Uh, I think also SMA uh, in terms of genetic screening, but this is a quite a, a new view that we have to put in the new screening so that we are going to to apply genetics uh, for, for newborn screening, this is the case of SMA, is a sort of, uh, you know, paradigmatic example of pivotal disease that probably will open the way for newborn screening for many other disorders. So I can just say that uh, uh, transversal actions are definitely very important across ERNs. So this is what I may say from my side. I will 
put, you know, I will, you know, be uh, uh, completely available and helpful, hopefully to to help and to follow this uh, these initiatives. I hope also to to be able uh, in a you know relatively short. Uh, period or to, um, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to, to let you know some news about possible uh, projects are related to new screening that we may have in Europe. So um, this is, you know, my, my only point. So this is a challenging, is a new view for, you know, uh, facing ray diseases and for patients and families. And we are, we are all involved uh, in, uh, try to do and to make this possibility completely feasible in the next years. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alessandra, uh, uh, for supporting this and for joining forces uh, uh, in, in the Alliance. Uh, now uh, it's my turn to um, complete with um, Marie-Christine and uh, Marie-Christine, we have heard a lot of support, a lot of uh, um, uh, interesting remarks also how we in on the european level could support uh, sma europe and especially also the sma organizations across europe to implement uh, nbs for sma uh, what are your thoughts yes my, my thought is that at this time the white paper is just the first step uh, on the implementation of newborn screening and newborn screening in SMA. We have still a lot to do. Um, we will continue, of course. Uh, I fully understand uh, that uh, there are a few were bottlenecks, but also I think it's very important to develop um, new specific uh, standard of care and social care also for this baby treated by newborn screening. Uh, they have not the same form of SMA that the current population. We have to support the current population, but also the new form uh, of uh, disease. And it's very important to vo work very closely with the ERN to develop uh, this, uh, this new um, care and this new social support. And, and the second, and I think it's very important to work together for all the different disease, different rare disease, and of course, the Alliance will be very, very happy to work with uh, all this and all the stakeholders to uh, go to the Parliament, uh, to the European Commission to explain what we need this uh, newborn screening for all the rare disease as soon as there's uh, an available treatment uh, on, this, on the market. Um, to finish my talk, um, I will invite you to go to our website. You will find a lot of information and uh, different information and to go regularly to this website because as soon as we have new data, new evidence, a uh, new paper, we will update the website. And thank you, thank you so much to be so, so many people on the talk and to listen to us. Uh, it's very important to her for uh, the family, the SMA families to, to be followed by so many people and thanks for your support. Yeah, thank you very much, Marie-Christine. And it's, uh, uh, these are not only listeners, these are really people who are, I'm convinced, will spread this message to uh, many people and decision makers across Europe. Uh, at uh, the end of this meeting, um, I want to thank all participants. I want to thank our uh, members of parliament who supported us for this meeting. And I know there are a couple of others that uh, are prepared to join a uh, Friends of the Alliance group that, uh, that will really help us uh, to advocate for NBS, uh, for SMA across Europe and to join forces with other rare diseases. You will find in the chat the link to the white paper, so please uh, uh, take advantage of it. Uh, download it, uh, share it as, as generously as you can. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.